Hello and welcome on Watches TV, welcome at our club space and we have two special guests with us today. First we have Mr. Ali Neal, whom you've already seen on our channel when he came to talk about his spectacular collection. And at the time he teased us a little bit regarding what we're about to talk today. And uh, we also have Mr. Arnaud Tellier, a highly respected antique clock and vintage watch specialist, having been for many years the director of the Patek Philippe Museum. But he's also worked in the world of uh, auction houses and this for many years too. I mean, he's clearly an expert and today your destinies are kind of linked. Well, Ali, and as I mentioned, you're a collector and uh, you started your watch collection more than 10 years ago. And uh, this has led you to start a business in the field of uh, vintage uh, watches, meaning that you know rather well how things uh, work. Uh, you've observed many things. Uh, you've been directly and actively involved, uh, uh, whether on the auction side or uh, on the or of the business or by simply buying and uh, selling uh, watches. And during the COVID period, you took uh, all this experience to think about a new way of doing business. You've just introduced a few days back in Singapore Future Grail, a pretty impressive uh, solution, or should I say a service, which could be kind of a, a game changer. And this is what we're going to expand on during this interview. So Ali, tell us all about this 360 degrees approach that you've just come up with. Fantastic. Th thanks for seeing you in Singapore and in Geneva in, uh, in uh, one week time or 10 days time. <laughs> so thank you for that. Always a pleasure uh, uh, to have us here and to have you there. Um, Future Grail is, um, the whole idea came from how can we change the market, uh, you know, to the better. Uh, yeah. Because watches is in a way an ancient, uh, you know, business, an ancient trade, uh, an ancient art uh, that still the business is being run exactly the same way in auctions and in, uh, in life and trading. So we look at technology and see how can we marry the technology with the ancient business and make it much more accessible and much more fun mm -hmm. uh, and expand, you know, the following into, into our world, our, our vintage world. And you really come with this, indeed, 360 approach because I mean, it's not just the idea of selling and buying watches. I mean, Correct. there's a full service around, also a location uh, dedicated to this. Uh, can you explain us a little bit about that? Um, we, uh, we call it the 360 degree uh, solution. So uh, our uh, plan and our business uh, model is a 360 degree model, meaning that uh, if you're just uh, beginning, you're new to the watch market, uh, you know, you want to get to know, understand what's happening understand the watches, understand, you know, to buy, uh, have information. We start with that first, you know, with you as a new collector. So every service that we created is to start from the beginning and exit to the, to the last stage. So we give curation and advisory to our clients uh, that are depositing also watches in our safes. Uh, same like a bank, a dual key uh, model. One of them with our partner, Malka Ahmed, the key, and one of them with our clients. It's a bonded space, so it's tax-free. That's also something we faced ourselves in the future, uh, in the past, yeah. um, you know, so we always uh, had issues where to store our, uh, you know, uh, watches, how to maintain them, how to document them. So we will do that for you. You deposit the watches with us in a bonded facility. You, we take care of all the collection management. We take all the data, study your watches, uh, capture all the collateral and then create an NFT for you. Um, you know, with the 3D, 3D scan of the watch as well. So all the data, all the pictures, all the 3D scan, go into the NFT form and goes into your wallet because we'd like you to travel all over the world with your collection just on your phone. Um, while you know that your collection is being maintained well, uh, that NFT can provide a lot of value for you, especially for the proof of ownership. You know, imagine if you're in New York, sitting with someone, you can transact now very, very fast by doing so. But also, of course, we created a museum uh, space that I made a promise here in Geneva just, uh, last year, uh, last November. I don't know when the exactly was aired the interview, but we made the promise and accelerated that. Uh, and we made the official opening on the 26th uh, of April. Um, now we're taking watches in and we started the full services in our uh, business. But of course, when we store, we manage the collections. We also want an exit plan for our clients to make sure that these collections are highlighted well. Uh, described properly. Of course, thank you, Arno, for joining the team. With this knowledge, with this 40 years of experience, brings an immense value to our business, but also to the collecting community, to our clients, to provide this information and 
be more informative about what you are buying. Mm -hmm. So we are bridging the gap in our business model between the seasoned uh, and people that have access you know, to information and the newcomers or even existing collectors that want to expand their collections. And we bridge all the gap in between through technology and through building an amazing team that provides this value. Regarding the documentation, Arnaud, uh, can you explain us a little bit uh, what you're doing precisely? That's the idea uh, when I join uh, Ali in the Future Grail project. It's uh, to do the right description of the watches and um, to take care uh, of them properly and study the path of each of them. So with a huge library I have uh, at home and I can uh, try to, to fix what they were in the past and what they can uh, do today and after we can fix that for the future. What will happen, for instance, during uh, like uh, one of those uh, the documentation, you take the watch apart, for instance, and you see things that maybe weren't supposed to be there. Uh, wh how will you handle uh, the, 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 this situation with your clients? Well, to me, it's very simple. It's, uh, this is the idea of Future Grill, is to be extremely transparent mm -hmm. about uh, what you buy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, We are uh, in the business of creating equality in the market. Uh, meaning I, I'm very privileged, of course, I have access to information when I was collecting and I think that drove me to build a nice collection because I had the information I needed to make an informed decision. So we are bridging that gap to our clients. So we want to make sure that everything that we know about the watch, if there's a, a scratch, there is a dent, uh, there is a repair on the enamel of the watch, uh, uh, there's parts uh, changed, uh, that we will describe this in every every watch that we sell in, uh, in the future. That's very, very, very important for us. And this is why we always say we are creating the equality in the market mm -hmm. and bridging that. It, it's almost a little bit new also because, I mean, to have to be this to be this full transparent about things, I think is really taking your customers uh, seriously. Then. I think very, very important because, you know, everything we are doing is based on our own experience. Uh, what we pass through ourselves as collectors from the storage, the bonded facility, the taxation uh, element, all of this is a problem that I faced myself. I put the watches in boxes in the bank, you know, underground that I would don't have any energy to go there and open the boxes. We want to have a lounge, you know, that's why you see the space is big. Uh, you have a big lounge for people to enjoy, uh, you know, uh, ask their friends, their family to come and see this collection. Of course, exhibit their own watches, you know, on display. So we want to create this awareness about these collections, not to collect dust, but actually to be exposed to the world and exposed to even family members. Yeah, you know, I, think I think this think, is really, uh, a yeah. really strong point indeed, and it's, uh, it keeps the collection alive. Uh, and indeed, instead of keeping them uh, in, in the safe, I mean, you can really enjoy and share it with your friends uh, and with the facility that you put forward. I mean, indeed, I mean, I mean you really can host many people there. And I think we nice believe also that people should not be, uh, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, um, <laughs> not to be uh, discontinued from the market. It's very important. You know, the access to the information, the way we're going to describe the watches and study them properly and educate, because sometimes there's movements, you know, that are never been described, you know, they're very rare, you know, and the knowledge of our know in that respect is, is of course, immense. Um, that provides more awareness about watches that people are not looking at at all as well, you know, and also some collections that come from states or from people been collecting for very, very, very long. We want to do justice for them. You know, when they exit these watches after 30 years, 40 years, we want to make justice for these collections and not to make a very congested auction or very congested sale, you know, uh, and do a good job. And we're not afraid to describe these watches, even if they've been in the market before. And now we have to re rewrite the descriptions. We are not afraid of that because we have to lead by example. Uh, if we wait for others to make a change, I think we are going to be ancient ourselves <laughs> instead of the watches. So we said, OK, uh, we use our experience, everything we face as collectors and the challenges in defining the quality and the descriptions of these watches and make something extremely transparent for generations. Regarding the transparency, uh, will this, uh, these descriptions, these, uh, the documentation be kind of uh, open based information? No, or? it's uh, going to be, uh, of course, private for the clients that are depositing the watches with us. And when, of course, they're exiting for auctions because we're creating an auction that we'll talk about, um, you know, this is where we expose this information uh, to the world to bid on it. But also we have the capability to do a private auctions as well, because sometimes you want privacy. Um, so we are able to put 10 collectors very interested in that specific piece that's for sale without the, uh, you know, anyone knowing about. And that we will extend it to our regular clients and our, uh, of course, VIP members. Mm -hmm. 
So let, let's talk indeed a, a bit further about the, the transactional aspect of your business. Uh, you talked about those uh, private auctions, but you're also going to have like public auctions, I guess. Correct. We, we, we will do that and then we will do two types, which is traditional timed auctions, the same like today auctions, but also fractionalized auction, uh, which is a very, very uh, hard work we do, uh, you know, to create that uh, solution, you know, for very high valued items. Uh, so we envision that, you know, these watches are becoming very, very, very rare and very expensive. Uh, and the barrier of entry become unbelievably too much for all of us. Um, so we want to use the power of uh, community to have a share in these very important pieces and not to miss the chance because I know from myself uh, so many times about watches I don't want to buy today, you know, from the financial point of view, but I had to buy them because I knew that I, if I miss, I'm going to not see this watch for 20 years, you know. So we want to give a chance for uh, create equality in the market and then uh, bridge that equality uh, issue and the area, barrier of entry of money. So you presented this uh, concept of fractional ownership uh, a few days ago. What has been the responses so far? Fantastic. You know, we're already talking to consigners of very important pieces. Uh, we are ourselves looking to find, you know, pieces for uh, auction that we are planning to launch in, in September. Of course, please don't take me for it, but uh, our aim is to, for our first auction to be in September. Okay. And regarding the uh, auction itself and uh, the, the transaction model, uh, there too, uh, you're bringing a little bit of uh, novelty, I would say. Correct. Um, because, you know, when you sell in fractions, uh, the watches will stay with us. So this is something new to the market uh, that I'm sure fellow collectors will uh, accept, uh, you know, with time. And uh, I think maybe we will see also a very overwhelming response because um, when a piece is two million, three million, five million dollars, uh, you know, you would want a piece of it before it's ten million. You know, um, so we envision that these pieces uh, stay with us and they will trade uh, ownership of pieces of these piece, uh, watches will exchange hands very often, and that creates a huge value for these watches. And uh, meaning that your entry is easier, but also your exit is much easier because we can match the buyer that's willing to buy a percentage of that piece. Uh -huh. And also regarding the transaction fees uh, themselves, I mean, you, you kind of lowered that, that bar too, to kind of probably speed up a little bit. The, 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 exactly. The, yeah, that's also the, the barrier of entry, uh, you know, uh, discussions that we had. And we made the decision that, look, at the end of the day, you work 10 years, 20 years, 30 years to build your collection. I should not come and take a huge fees from you for your hard work. It should be, I think, a continuous effort, a continuous relationship for decades that we can make money together for, you know, many years instead of looking at making quick uh, you know, return on, on, on a certain collection. So we, we, our business model is a 5% five, 5 and 5%, meaning a total of 10%, the, the buyer will pay 5% premium and the seller will pay 5% premium, but there's a twist. Um, next time the same watch come to, uh, to sell and at our auction, you'll only pay the 5% uh, buyer's premium. So meaning the seller's premium is only for one time. Uh, and that's for a simple reason that because we know that the, uh, the watch is going to trade many times and much more often than they used to trade before. Mm -hmm. Very, very high valued items, as you know, in auction, and we discuss about it all the time, cover lots, important pieces, they go and that's it. They never, we never see them until someone, you know, pass it to next generation or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, as much as we love watches for what they are, I mean, there is a little bit of a kind of a financial instrument mm -hmm. uh, dimension to, uh, to this project. Uh, but that's actually kind of a reality of the market. I mean, uh, as much as we love it, I mean, the, that's a reality. C can you explain us a little bit more how this is perceived? Uh, look, we, um, you know, we're very passionate about what we do. You know, I, I think you can see our eyes in the last two days in Geneva. It's like, uh, you know, we're so happy, you know, to be in connection with these watches, look at them, study them, uh, doing all that, you know, part. Uh, I think it's very important for us to pass that to our clients and make sure that they make really informed decisions about what they are buying. That's, that's our aim. That's the most important. And we don't want to turn people off, meaning that you go in very aggressive, you want to, to buy and then you make the, your first few mistakes and then you exit the market. We've seen it happen so many times. We want to make sure when you enter into this, you're just busy 
looking at what you want to build and then looking at your vision and you let us help you along the way to try to avoid all these mistakes. I think it's very important. So you're based in Singapore, uh, but I guess you're not catering this service only for yes. Singaporean or Asian customers. Is there, What kind of uh, uh, customer base are you looking for? Um, mainly, of course, we're consolidating collections in, into this space. That's very important for us. But of course, the selling model is, is worldwide uh, and our uh, services uh, um, like advisory and curation services is extended to institutions and to individuals worldwide, of course. We cannot take so many uh, clients, but uh, we focus on strategic uh, clients uh, that we think uh, they are going in the right direction. Uh, we love their style, if, how, where they're going, and we, you know, we will help them, you know, help us you uh -huh. know, at the same time. And your customers can take one part of the service, not the full package? 100%. I mean, yeah, We're very, very flexible. flexible tailored to you, to your needs. If you have safety issues, we take care of your collection by depositing it. If you have uh, no time you know, to document your watches, we will do that for you. So there's a lot of aspects uh, you know, to do that. But of course, you know, we'll help you to finance your watches as well. Uh, you know, because sometimes we really don't want to sell the watch. So we'll find you a solution as well for these kind of things. Yeah. And regarding maybe, uh, I don't know, a kind of restoration or repair services, are you also going to offer this? Uh, well, that's difficult to define at, at this stage, you know, we don't want to dive into restoration, but of course, uh, I think especially with Arnaud's knowledge, he knows the surviving, you know, enamelers, the surviving uh, people qualified to, to service certain movements. Of course, we have to help our clients do these kind of things. And of course, we'll use two-tone vintage uh, watchmakers that we have already a service center to service all these watches that they already do for us, for myself, for my own collection. And they'll always be there to repair and fix these watches. And of course, uh, we envision we have to expand and uh, hire more watchmakers in the future. So, and maybe you can add something, I know. Yes, with uh, all the people I know, especially here in Switzerland, it will be uh, not uh, difficult to move the pieces uh, with a broker in l'occurrence uh, Malka Amit, uh, to Switzerland and after to give in consignment uh, for restoration to the right uh, people. Fortunately, at the moment, all the young watchmakers go to be independent watchmakers and create their own uh, watches and brands. So it's more and more difficult to, to find people who have the knowledge, the passion, and uh, the, the desire, the yeah, envy. The, yeah. the desire to, to do restoration at the moment, but exist a uh, few young, good watchmakers <laughs> available to do that. You came here with a little surprise that you're going to show us, and I'm quite excited to know more about it. Yes, this is our uh, last acquisition. This is a watch made for the Chinese market by Hilberry London. In fact, the watch was made uh, partly in Geneva and probably partly in the Val de Travers about the movement because there is a link between some family from the Val de Travers before the Beauvais. People work in London with the Hilberry uh, family. But this one has something uh, really special because it's a chronometer made for the Chinese market. It's not only a regular uh, a pocket watch with central second, but this one are something really unusual. He has a specific, uh, what we call peto cross escapement. It was very rarely used uh, in the watchmaking. Few Breguet pieces, tourbillon, uh, has uh, this uh, type of uh, escapement. And here, as you can see, there is also a specific uh, compensated balance. So the movement is uh, built in the English way with a typical engraving made for the Chinese market. But the extremely rare thing, it's a chronometer, a pocket chronometer made for the Chinese uh, market. The decoration uh, was made, it's a typical of the work of Jean-Louis Richter, who, who painted uh, in Geneva at the turn of the 18th century and beginning of the 19th century. And here is the uh, source of the engraving. It's some uh, very famous uh, engraving plate uh, available in England. So this is a typical thing, uh, especially made uh, in our country here in uh, Geneva, uh, for the trade by the English uh, merchants. What's the approximate date of this watch? It was made roughly 1805-1810, just as a period of a Napoleonic war. 
And the fact of having a case that has this uh, wave. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because you way. saw that, you know, very, very Yeah, rare. Donc this is very uh, rare, extremely rare on the Hilberry PCs. And in fact, uh, only the PCs uh, with uh, Peto Cross Escapement made by him or a solid goal movement are fitted in this type of uh, case. And as you can see, also the cuvette with the winding hole to wind the watch is absolutely amazing about the work, enamel work uh, with a champ levé technique. Ah, oh, yeah, that is impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you a lot for sharing with us this exceptional piece. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. So uh, currently here in Geneva, it's I mean, a busy moment for on the auction world. I guess you talked with a few other people from other auction houses. Correct. How do they perceive what you're coming up with? We surprisingly uh, overwhelmed, you know. Uh, I think we, we felt uh, support, you know. I think they see, they see the, uh, the vision that why we are doing this together. And, uh, you know, I think they're looking forward to see what's, uh, what we, we're doing. Um, it's very positive, to be honest, uh, you know, uh, from even the, the people we didn't expect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I think it's very, very good. You know, I think when you have a clear vision and then you do things right, uh, people will have to support you, even if they don't want to support you, honestly, sometimes. So uh, that help, help us, you know, as long as our message is clear and we are honoring our word and our promises, I think people will support us. Yeah, I think. Excellent. Well, I really wish you the best of luck with this. I mean, it really feels that you've invested a lot of time, energy, probably a bit of money also. But I mean, this concept is really, I mean, you turn it all around and it, it just makes sense. I think mm -hmm. it's... Uh, I hope so. so. I hope so. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for dropping by here in Geneva to talk about this. Fantastic. You're all welcome. Right. You. All right. Well, you see, that was quite interesting. Huh? Like I said, maybe kind of a game changer. Well, thank you for watching. See you real soon. And of course, Viva Watchmaking!